Hello everyone, I'm on my way home from work. Just wanted to kind of talk about a similar subject. My last video was kind of on mental health in a general sense, but I wanted to touch a little bit on mental health care specifically. Now, uh, for those who don't know me, um, I work in healthcare security. So I'm healthcare adjacent. I'm certainly not a healthcare provider, but I have spent several years um, working directly with people that have mental health problems. And it's given me quite a lot of insight, at least into certain parts of the mental health care system here in the state of Minnesota. And I can only really speak to that. I suspect that uh, my experience is very similar to experience in other states and even other countries, but I certainly don't want to claim more knowledge than I have. Um, but I wanted to talk about inpatient mental health care and frankly the lack of inpatient mental health care in this state and again in other states. So I'm not, I don't want to just be ragging on Minnesota and I don't want to be ragging on mental health care in general, because there's a lot of great work, there's a lot of really devoted people in the mental health care field. Um, but I think that most people, even those that don't necessarily have a lot of knowledge of the healthcare system, are aware of the fact that um, there is kind of a, a lack of mental health care, and there's a lot of different reasons for that. One of the one of the reasons. Uh, it kind of goes back to, I think it goes all the way back to the 60s. Um, most people have, again, sort of a general awareness of the fact that there used to be um, a far more institutionalized level of um, inpatient mental health care. You know, you have the images in your mind of, you know, the cuckoo's nests, you know, those hospitals with the awful green walls and restraints and the orderlies with their little bow ties and, and uh, electroshock therapy and all that scary terrible stuff that kind of uh, haunt the minds of anyone who's seen a, a movie in one of those locations um, and so there's there's kind of a, a understandable reason that a lot of people kind of view that type of inpatient mental health care with suspicion. And to an extent, there should be some suspicion because obviously in this country and throughout the Western world, we, we concern ourselves very greatly with people's personal rights, and we should. And locking someone up, no matter how nicely you try to do it, is taking away someone's liberty. And so we, we should certainly be uh, very thoughtful and, and uh, considerate when we think about anything that ends up with someone, someone's liberty being taken away. Um, we have really good, uh, historically well-established procedures for taking away people's liberty for criminal acts and you know we all kind of have a general idea of our rights when it comes to you know if I'm arrested I have the right to a lawyer I don't have to make any statements they have to prove that I'm guilty before you know I can be in prison long term when it comes to mental health care it's completely different and it needs to be you know you can't wait to have a trial for someone who might be trying to kill themselves right now, or even for someone that is a chronic danger to society. That's, yeah, that's not strictly true. There are, there are uh, legal uh, parts to that as well, but we'll gloss over that for now. The point is, is it's not as neat and tidy. And that's not to, it's not to say that our current legal system is neat and tidy, but it's better. 
right now, you know, when, when I'm at work, people get brought in by the police because maybe allegedly they were going to kill themselves or they are, you know, suffering some sort of a psychotic break or something like that. And the first thing oftentimes that they'll say is, am I under arrest? No, no, you're not. So am I free to leave? Well, no, you're not free to leave either. And understandably, that's confusing because, you know, we're going to hold them there for hours or days while the professionals figure out what it is that needs to happen with this person. I don't blame someone for being upset about that. And it's, it's very confusing and it's, it's not a procedure that most people have any idea exists. And if they know that it exists, they don't know what it entails. And again, we live in a country of rights. And as soon as someone's told that, no, you can't leave a hospital, they start, well, sometimes they start getting upset. Sometimes they start getting combative. And so it, it's not a well-designed system to begin with, largely because of all of the legal nonsense that has come to establish the system. You know, it's not a straightforward, it's not a, a system that was designed. It's a system that is de facto based on, on laws and, and statute, well, statutes or laws. But my point is, it's not, it's not a, a system that anyone sat down and created. And again, I, I get why that's frustrating. But where the real issue comes in is, let's say we have identified someone who needs inpatient therapy. Well, the hospital system that I work for, we have a short-term inpatient uh, mental health unit, which means, I, I believe that the goal is no more than seven days inpatient. And there are people that, yeah, you can, maybe they were off their meds in those seven days, we can get them back on their meds or we can figure out what was wrong with their meds before. And now they're good, you can ship them out the door, they're ready to go back into society. That happens a lot. That's frankly, that's probably the majority of the cases that that, that unit deals with. But then there's cases where you have someone who either they need a lot more treatment than that. And again, I'm not a psychologist. I don't know what that all entails. But then there's also people that they might not ever be okay. And the current system is, is make them okay enough and then kick them out. Because here in the state of Minnesota, we have one one state hospital where you can send someone for long-term involuntary inpatient treatment. One. There used to be several. There's, a, if you Google it, um, in, um, uh, what is that place called? Fergus Falls. Fergus Falls, Minnesota. You can Google the old Fergus Falls State Hospital. It's still there. It's completely empty and abandoned, but it is a massive facility that had inpatient treatment there. And there are other hospitals, some that have been torn down, some that have been, I don't know, maybe converted into other things that existed previously and are, they don't exist anymore. We have our one state hospital now. It's, um, it's referred to in statute as the state security hospital. I, I want to say it's called St. Peter's, but that's probably wrong. It doesn't matter. The point is, is somehow in like the 50s and 60s and 70s we decided to get rid of all of these state hospitals and it's not as though the population has gotten smaller if the population hasn't gotten smaller the number of people with mental disorders haven't, hasn't gotten smaller obviously meaning that effectively the number of inpatient mental health beds here has gotten I mean, has obviously gotten smaller with the uh, abolition of those hospitals. But even with our one hospital, every year, the number of beds to the total population also gets smaller. 
so that means we have less and less places to put people that need intensive long-term inpatient care. Or again, sometimes there are just people who need to be institutionalized permanently. It's very sad, don't get me wrong, I'm not like, yay, institutionalized lots of people, that's terrible, I don't want that. But some people need that. And it's literally cruel not to give it to them. Um, I'm kind of debating telling a story. We, we had a gentleman in our hospital. Um, and again, I want to be very careful about not getting too many details for privacy reasons. I will say that he was with us for almost a year. Again, on that same inpatient mental health unit that's designed for seven day stays. So he was there for, yeah, almost a year. And we had nothing we could do with him, even though our unit wasn't appropriate for him. He was not at all flourishing there. He needed a bed at a, um, at the state hospital. And every time we almost had a bed for him, the state hospital would call back and say, well, we have someone else who's in a worse situation and your guy is in a stable situation, so he's gonna stay with you for now. There's nothing we could do with him. We couldn't send him home. We couldn't ship him off to a different hospital. He needed that bed. And it took a year to get this guy a bed in a state hospital. So I'm gonna kind of go over why, and this is a general understanding on my part, this isn't something that I've researched a lot, but my understanding is back in the 60s, I want to say in the, under the Kennedy administration, but that could be wrong. Um, they established this new idea of community-based mental health care. And it sounds like a really, really nice idea, right? We have people, hey, you know, they're, they've got some mental health problems, but instead of sending them to these hospitals where they're going to be stuck there for a long time, they're going to be able to live in the community and they're going to be able to take care of outpatient mental health stuff. For some people, by the way, that's a great idea and it works. But for some people, it doesn't work at all. And the problem is, is that the states uh, looked at this new program that was being instituted by the federal government and they said, oh, wait, the feds are going to pay for this. So what do we have all these big state hospitals that cost us lots and lots of money for? Let's get rid of those. And everybody gets community-based health care. Well, again, that's not appropriate for some people, for a lot of people. Rel- not relatively speaking. Relatively speaking, it's, it's perfectly reasonable for most people. But for those people that need the institutionalized structure, the institutionalized um, ability to watch and care for, for folks, this, is, this doesn't work well for them because they're in the community and there is no structure there. There's, hey, Bob, show up for your appointment tomorrow. Well, maybe Bob shows up for his appointment tomorrow or maybe Bob goes and gets his math and he goes on a three-day bender and he ends up in the ER because he has bugs under his skin and bugs under his skin and is, uh, you know, delusional. If Bob had been in the state hospital system, he wouldn't have gotten his meth. And I'm not saying that all people with mental illness are drug users, but there is significant overlap there. And the drug use is extraordinarily detrimental for them. And when you have, when, when they have access to that, it, it makes treating their mental health disorder significantly harder, if not completely impossible. Because oftentimes, the, again, I'm, I'm kind of stepping out of my area of knowledge here, but I have personally seen people with, you know, uh, let's say, well, all kinds of different disorders, and they get on the meths or they get on the heroin and they use whatever else. 
and it totally screws them up. And oftentimes, I, I know of one guy who was totally normal before he got on meth, and now he has an irreversible psychotic condition from meth. That's ne not necessarily everybody's uh, experience with that particular drug, but I'll tell you, that stuff will mess you up bad. Don't do meth, kids. Um, but on the other hand, um, folks, again, that are in the system, they're going to have people that watch, watch out for them. They're not going to be able to get their drugs. They're not going to be able to uh, participate in a lot of different harmful activities, including trying to kill themselves, for example. Um, it's, it's, it's frustrating to me. And, and again, this, this isn't an area of expertise for me, but it's an area that I am adjacent to. And I have seen over and over again, the system fail people and people that need help and people that would benefit from help. Not because I want to lock away all the people with any kind of mental problems, but because we could be helping folks maybe eventually return to a normal life. Or for those we can't do that for, we can give them a stable life and, and one that's as fulfilling as possible. Because I'll tell you, living out on the street and doing drugs is not a fulfilling life. The people on drugs on the street will tell you that. It doesn't mean that insight's going to help them fix things. But they'll, they'll tell you straight up, I wish I weren't this way. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's a little depressing. But it's something that I hope eventually we'll be able to fix. You know, we, we went, it's kind of the, the old pendulum. We went way far away from institutionalized care. Hopefully we can get back towards a happy medium where only the people that need institutionalized care are getting it, but the people that need it are getting it. Because right now, they're not. And it is extremely difficult. Even, even on a, for kind of the short-term inpatient stuff, you know, we're constantly shipping people off, uh, not just to other hospitals within the state. We're sending people to hospitals outside of the state. We're literally calling an ambulance to give someone a four-hour taxi ride to Fargo or a five-hour taxi ride to Grand Forks. And then they have to drive back. So we're taking an ambulance out of service for four or five hours just to get someone off somewhere else where they're probably only going to be hospitalized for two, three, four days anyway. And then those folks have to figure out how to get back home to Minnesota. So I, we're not doing folks many favors. And, and then they get agitated about it when you tell them, hey, guess what? We're sending you off to Fargo. And then you can't blame them either because, well, holy crap, I'm in a hospital right here. Why can't I just, you know, be in the hospital right here? Imagine if you had you know, some sort of a physical ailment. And yeah, okay, sometimes if it's bad enough, you got to get sent to a different hospital, but you're not expecting, you know, unless you live in remote Alaska, you're not expecting to have to go somewhere four hours away to get your treatment. You know, around here, you can probably get to, you know, the a hospital that can treat you for pretty much anything, maybe an hour's drive if you're out in the absolute boonies. But, uh, you know, for, for mental health care, it's just, it's treated completely differently. And that's kind of one of the problems about modern medicine as it currently exists. It's not holistic at all. It's, you know, either your problem is physical or it's mental. Well, last I checked, my brain is part of my body. So it's, all physical, but, you know, I, and, and I, I don't think that most doctors really think that way, but that's the way the system is currently built because that's the way people used to think. So with any luck, at some point in the future, we'll get around to fixing that, but, uh, you know, I, I don't have those answers and I'm 
not educated enough to have those answers, at least not in the area of mental health care. And, you know, I, it, it's, it sounds too complicated for me to want to try to have those answers, to be honest with you. Um, but until such a time as, as someone really steps up to try to fix that, whether they be some sort of, you know, leader in the medical field or some sort of legislator, I don't really see anything changing that much. And frankly, because mental health care is largely kind of an out of sight, out of sight, out of mind kind of thing, I don't really see a popular outcry uh, to fix the problems either. But I am, I am hopeful that eventually it will get fixed. And that's kind of one of those things about society generally is is uh, we have problems, and it takes a heck of a long time to fix it. But um, well, maybe maybe now you're a little more aware of the issue and maybe you're a legislator or a future one that can help us fix that issue but uh thanks for listening it's been a pleasure talking and like comment subscribe do all that crap if you want to and have a good night